But thanks for doing the um, Apple Music. Yeah, Apple Music live stream, the concert. Dude, Apple Music. So good. That was sick. You didn't come. Nope. So you watched this sh- live stream. I-, I heard it was hot as anything. Oh, it was what? You see me, Nick. I'm wet. <laughs> I, yeah, like within I, the first I, two like, minutes I as well. come out and I'm wet mm. instantly, just dripping. I didn't, I didn't even fix my hair after a while. I was just like, f*** it, because it's just going to get messed up again. Where did the idea for the wig come from? I don't want you to like, dismantle it to the point where it's not mysterious and fun anymore, but what, what is Igor? Like, what, why, are we, why are we looking at you the way we are? And what, Bro, I just what is it? thought it was cool. <laughs> like everything else, it was just like, oh, that'll be cool. But where did you try the wig on for the first time? So I kind of didn't try it on until I went and got it made. Like, I just had this idea. All right, I want a wig shaped like this. And then I went to the wig people and they had I picked out the specific blonde I wanted yeah. and we got them made put it on and it was that I got a flat top made mm-hmm. like this weird yeah. flat top wig made but yeah. it wasn't sick and like a longer version of the one I have mm-hmm. but the one I've always wanted was this the and I've been drawing that character for like three years now did it and it's actually it's actually in a stop motion that I did for this vice show it's a little stop motion video thing I did it has black hair, but it's the short bob cut and the turtleneck and the glasses and the, and the gold teeth. Mm. And it's in that. And then I just was like, oh, I'm going to switch it to blonde just based on the undertones of my skin. Was it a subconscious drawing or were you drawing inspiration from something else? That you'd I don't know. I just you? thought it would be a cool character. Just yeah, a yeah. tall, slim suit, blonde hair. And like black dudes don't really have hair like that. I think the closest thing was Ike Turner mm. with that mm-hmm, like cut, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. It, wasn't, it wasn't blonde. So I was like, oh. I'll run a blonde one. It's a weird question, but when people often like come into some form of character-driven experience in their career, they say they feel different. Do you feel different when you put the suit and the wig on? Unfortunately, no. Mm. I feel like the same. <laughs> Do you think people look at you different though from what you've seen in the crowd, even in that one show? Are people like, wow? Like, uh, when I'm up there, I just be in my zone yeah, yeah, and yeah. just doing the thing, but uh, people People say hi differently this week, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I bet they do. People say hi differently. Yeah, it's tight, though. You've achieved, man, something that no one's ever achieved before. It's official. You're the first solo rap artist to ever have a Billboard number one on the album's chart, fully self-produced, fully self-arranged. Yeah. That's mad. It's really cool. I saw, it's funny, someone said, uh, I saw a comment, no one cares that you produced and arranged it, Tyler, but me letting people know that will allow different doors to open that's not me just doing voiceovers or a verse like me me being adamant about having that on the cover when i when i'm designing it is letting people know hey let me make the score for your movie or let me do this and that and in 20 years like that detail will pay off i put that on the flower boy the other cover too Mm. and i'm gonna just try to keep i wish i did that since day one you know, everyone would know. <laughs> it's kind of, they kind of missed the point, that comment though, like a lot of comments that come in, it's sort of a knee-jerk reaction. And, you know, that's fine, they, they have their place, but you know, it's not like you're sitting there painstakingly putting this together from inside to get it out to people, for people to care about that detail. It's entirely for you. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 100%. A lot of people miss that. A lot of people also don't realize, what, I, I think review, people, like, people who review sh- too, I think we need to put their biases I had a friend mention Like a bio this. before you read the review of like- Yeah, like, like uh, my John friend, Thompson doesn't really like rap music. He doesn't and, like <laughs> rap music. And the girl that he fell in love with- Is a big fan. Uh, yeah. Left him for a girl who loves uh, Young Jeezy. <laughs> and he beat the f*** out of him. Now here's his review on Southern rap music right now. That's kind right of inspired. Now. That's kind of inspired. It's like, or this guy wanted to be black and only f- black girls his whole life. <laughs> this is why he's giving this shitty rap album best new music because he wants to get the thumbs up from this. It's kind of inspired <laughs> to have people to have to come clean about Yeah, because like, I even get it with clothes. Like, kids like, oh, that sweater's trash. Do you ever wear sweater vests? Yeah. No. You only wear t-shirts, hoodies, them weak-ass black chinos, right? Yeah, I've never worn a sweater in my life. So what's your... Where, I just need, what, what's your point of reference on if this sweater is good or not yeah, what's for your what it is? And they never, wear? they ne- I always find it weird. A friend asked me the other day, what do you think of so-and-so album? And I'm like, I f- don't feel e- comfortable even telling you because mm. I don't even listen to that type of music. Mm. It's not for me, but I can't even tell you if it's good or bad because mm. I just don't listen to that type of shit. Do you protect yourself from those opinions though, to some degree? Because you were just talking yeah, about a I comment. Have, yeah, I can't, that shit don't matter. 
But you got that comment got to you, so you must open it up every now and then, even if well, it's just Well, I interest. reach, and I'm just like, oh, you're a dumbass. Oh, you only see surface level. Mm. You think I just put that just to, no, no, no. See, I'm thinking 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. I'm playing the long game. What opportunity? And I need people to know that, oh, this is, I, this is the full idea. This yeah. isn't just me rapping over some random, like, this was the full idea. Everything yeah. is very particular. I was going to jump ahead to that, but actually I might save that to the end of the conversation if that's cool and just kind of focus on Eagle right now because, um, you know, out of this live performance, um, you know, we really got an insight that the character was a full commitment and we knew from the pictures you put up and the ideas that you put up and like the little teasers and stuff on social media yeah. that you were all in, but to, to perform in that regard as well is like, and to bring that character to life is like, this is a full 100% commitment right now. Eagle is a real thing. Oh yeah, it's a, it's just an idea. You, Lionel's like my best friend mm -hmm. and we, we're, we like low key met in drama class. <laughs> we was in drama club and we were doing plays. Seventeen, mm -hmm. doing plays. I got kicked out of drama club in eighth grade for doing what? Because she said I was too hyper. <laughs> right. So she kicked me out first right. day, and I was like, "Fuck you!" Like whatever. But with that said, I like to dress. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. Goblin it was a ski mask. Wolf was the camp. Sh then yeah. cherry bomb. I had the the pink face thing, and yeah. like I always loved that. All my videos. I'm in. I'm bald. One scene. Like. I don't know, that shit's really fun. But I feel like Flower Boy was the first time that you'd kind of like actually just presented yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I definitely... That was like a super strong yeah, statement. I was just be, like, here. Like, this is me. Here. Yeah. Green hat on the cover. Just yeah. white shirt, nothing even, not even a cool shirt. It was a plain white shirt. Yeah, and there was a ton of questions asked on that album. I mean, you know how I feel because we spoke briefly about, well, not briefly, we had a good conversation about that album and I, I still listen to that album. And um, I feel like you were asking so many questions on Flower Boy and searching for the answers through that record. And yeah, I feel like Igor, and we were talking before we rolled, I was like, this is such a sad album. It's like you didn't like the answers you got. You know what I mean? It's like a mad... Well, also, uh, Igor was definitely like all feeling. Woke up in the morning, this is how I felt, made that song, did that for like two weeks. And then I was like, oh, shit, I have something. It was like six songs, six, seven songs. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, and that's kind of why it goes into this weird chronological order because yeah. that was how I felt that morning. It was like over a span of like two weeks almost. And then when I, every time I make an album, I put it in a playlist on my phone yeah. just to see how it flows and stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, shit, this, this, uh, this flows. And I was subconscious, like I didn't even notice I was drawing a circle. It was just all filling. It's what was great. the first song that you that you made? Can you remember where it started? Uh, first song was Low Key Earthquake, and that's mm -hmm. like 2017 in May. But that mm -hmm. may not have even ended up on your record, right? That was initially you were kind of, because I mean, when we spoke about two years ago, you were saying then that you were kind of mucking around trying to find reasons to write for people and see yeah, what Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to just write pop songs mm -hmm. for people, so mm -hmm. I kind of did that. But sometimes you got to just write songs with how you feel or whatever, so mm -hmm. I just wrote that. And um, but it's like a, it came out really cool. Earthquake's like a love song. It's like a, to yeah. me, it's like an out and out, straight up love song. And it's the mm -hmm. first, first statement on the record that says like, oh, this album is gonna be, it's, it's kind of, there's a lot of open heartedness to this record. Yeah, very 80s pop, kind of <laughs> what I was yeah. going idealistic for. Idealistic love and idealistic heartbreak. Yeah. That's where the 80s were. They were like, not, you don't hold anything back. I feel like after the 70s, which was all sort of bravado and all kind of like, there was some yeah. fakeness in there that the 80s was like. In a, in a bit though, it depends on what sector of music you're talking about. Cause yeah. I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of soul shit from the 70s. Yeah, that yeah, a lot that's of people true, know that true, was just pour heart out. But uh, not to go off topic, the 80s is becoming my favorite time. Not just music, but overall. overall. And I, I used to hate it, but now it's slowly becoming my favorite because of the sector of music mm. that I've like. I found over the years. Like, what are you listening to? Because that again, that's a broad dick. That gets so, a bad like, rep, by the way, the so 80s, but the, it's amazing. What was music happening in the, 80s. In the UK mm. in the 80s mm. with, like, I mean, everything but the girl, Sade, mm. the, the, sty the Style Council, mm. uh, so much weird, like, white, white people <laughs> making, trying to make, like, black soulish music, but they didn't, they grew up kind of white pop stuff. So this mesh that it made is beautiful. And mm. let's see, everything but the girl style council, uh, just the shit that was just coming out of there. And uh, so in the way they were dressing, just, I love it. 
It was kind of everything col- seemed so saturated and freeze yeah, uh, yeah, level yeah. forty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. these kids just making this super mature fun, pop music. Very mature pop, but they clearly study jazz. Yeah. So, but they they clearly hang out with punk kids because they're in like leather. But like it's it's this mesh, and I gravitated to that because they didn't really stick to one thing. And I was like, oh, this is fire. Yeah. And you go back and listen to those records and you're right. I think in the 80s, because the whole culture of the 80s was considered this kind of gross decade where everyone was just going for self and the fashion reflected that and the production reflected that. But you go back and you listen to it now knowing that every decade in its own way is totally gross. Mm -hmm. Um, And you go back to the 80s and you realize actually that there were some really weird songs and weird bands going on. Yeah, it's a lot of cool shit. I I just keep getting, I found some shit last night. Hold on. I found some shit last night because I was, it's cold outside. Dun, 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 dun. Lynx. This band called Lynx. Play it. I don't even know what this is. Some sh- black dude band, kind of in that level 42. I mean, that like freeze era, but it was more more poppy. Oh my God, listen to how jazzy that is. Like. Bro. <laughs> Look, he brings out the letter, and he like reads the lyrics. <laughs> Bro, that is the sickest shit to me. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh. That's, uh, it's cold outside. That's kind of the sweetest thing I've seen somebody do in a performance in a long time. It actually, provide Two-way the- Army. Yeah. Are we friends, Electric? Bro, that. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's so much that was coming but out. But Newman of the- was Gary Newman was out of his. Mind. Out of his mind. But like, it's so sick. Like he actually was separate to the 80s. Like he's separate yeah, to he's any, his own thing. He's and his I own remember thing. seeing that shit like, oh, this is. <laughs> but everyone's on point though. Even the drummer is yeah. like, with the afro and then the synth players. I love all that shit. It's little nuances that like, that I that I study. I'm like, oh, that's the coolest shit ever. You said um, when you were talking to your friend Jared, that was a really cool interview, the Flatboy interview too. And you said in that interview that um, you were just really trying to, because you've always been a, like totally into chords, and you love the idea of kind of bringing chords into music because it's not necessarily the go-to for people making modern music these days. They don't instantly go for six or seven chords, turnarounds, great progressions, and all these sort of things. I feel like you, you you went even way higher on this record. Like I said to you in the studio when we heard mm-hmm. it, I was like, I don't even know where you're getting the musicality yeah. from this from. No, yeah. How, Just, did, how did you get this stuff to that place again, given that where Flower Boy already took you I there? Think, I think everyone, whether it's a movie, and Quentin Tarantino will probably agree with this, whether it's a movie or music, everyone tries to recreate, they try to make stuff that gives them the feeling that something else had. Mm. Not necessarily make the same thing, but the feeling. So when I was four, five, six, seven, and I heard Brandy's uh, Always On My Mind, mm. number 10 off that album, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, number eight off Faith's album, Soon As I Get Home, mm-hmm. or uh, Sweet Taste of Love by Jeanne. And there's those, when I was younger, I didn't know what the f- chords were. I just mm. said, mom, it goes up and down, it slopes. It's a feeling that that mm. shit gave me. Mm. And every, the music I like all have that. You pick all the emotive ones. And people, I know I probably sound like a broken record. Chords, 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 Tyler, mm. chords. Like that's all, but that's the shit that I fucking care about more than anything. I listen mm. to music all day. So I wanted to make sure that this album, every song gave me that feeling of Jesus fucking Christ. I want, every time I hear this album, I'm like, oh, I didn't, I couldn't have made this. Yeah, that's what I wondered about how you feel when you listen back to your music. Because when I hear you, like the songs you're making, I'm like, damn, man, like, how did you even know to go from there to there? Because that, some of the most experienced songwriters would think that that chord progression is broken. Like, you shouldn't be able to go from there to there, but it's just so oh, instinctive. No, it's all, it's all feeling. It's just what my ear gravitates to. And mm-hmm. it's either always, since day one, I've always wanted to make the prettiest shit mm-hmm. that's borderline boring mm-hmm. or the hardest fucking shit. And I've, I've been trying to mix those together since my first album. Mm. Literally, the hardest shit and the prettiest shit. If you love once. the 80s and you love chords and you love the, the pretty shit, then surely, and man, I hope I'm, I'm bang on the money with this, surely like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis factor. Oh, what life. they were doing late 80s, early night with fucking Janet. Are you fucking dumb? Unbelievable. Funny How Time Fly is one of the greatest songs Unbelievable. of all time. And even New Edition. Like, dude, Can like, You Stand the Rain just, is like, like mind-blowingly brilliant. Insane. Them niggas. And they stay with the hats. So I want to, <laughs> I want to rummage through their keyboards, and just smell them. Them niggas are great. 
God, like God. Seriously. And it makes me happy that this album so thus far is successful. I'm not reprogramming ears, but people liking these songs with yeah. stuff like this and drums like this and melodies that they don't, that's like, what? It's refreshing the way that they listen to music. And maybe some of those people could now go back to Solange's last album mm -hmm. and be like, oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. Just listen to it with a different ear. Because like, mm -hmm. I feel like shit just got repetitive and stale. I mean, it definitely did get repetitive and stale. And I'm not saying my shit is the most out there shit. No, but you but are it's some 12-year-old and some 13-year-old who's hearing this and is like, whoa, so I've never heard experience. this. I, I have a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old who went to a concert and I said to my wife, like, how, how did they love it? And she said they found their tribe there, they found their people there. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that sick? I, I, you brought enough people in the room that appreciate what you do that yeah. they were like, these are our people. These are open-minded, creative yeah. people who want music to go beyond just a linear experience. Yeah, I don't want it to, I don't, it's so, I'll be in studio sessions with niggas and they play some shit and all they niggas be like, yeah, this is tight. But is it like good or what's the intent? Like, it's so, easy to, intent, it's so right? easy to make some shit that niggas could just fucking do this too. But like, what are, you, what are you pushing it? What's your nuance? What are you adding to it? That's yeah. not an obvious head nod. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'm happy I have a little cousin who could, him and his friends could listen to this shit. And subconscious, like, oh, it's, I could make music like this. And whatever they make, whether it's closed music or whatever, when they're 16, 17, they could approach it differently yeah. because this is like yeah. a thing now. You're feeding them, man. You're I, feeding I them. I love that With shit. a musical ambition. Because that's how my favorites did it. That's how, you know, the the Ericas and the, the Outkast and the, 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 yeah, the Yays. And, and yeah, yeah, like D'Angelo has a whole album with just bass line and, and a jazz rim shot. And jazz chords. It's so jazz, One more again has a... 30 minute intro before he start talking and I remember being nine because I bought that on my ninth birthday mm, mm. 2000 I was just like god you were such a weird nine year old he... for your friends I bet Bro, you <laughs> just thought I was you know how hard it is like on your ninth birthday going to buy a Mila Rue's Infinite Possibility the only album? person who thinks you're red is the person behind the counter Bro, at the record it was, store it was Sam Goody at the South Bay Galleria yeah. and I put D'Angelo yeah. I put the D'Angelo uh, yeah. album up, down and he was like you sure you and I was like, yeah, he's like, is that it? I was like, oh, no. And I went and got the Miller Rue album and was like, here. And I fucking studied them shit, bro. Um, you traveled a bit for this record, right? You said that from the stage that you went to like, and, and it's credited now, you just put the credits up. You went to Lake Como. There's worse places to record than Lake Como. Yeah, I just wanted to fucking leave. <laughs> I just wanted to leave. I went to Lake Como. Why Italy? Why Como? Solange I've been there. It's amazing. Frank came. But... It was awesome. Yeah. Frank was like, where you at? I was like, yeah, I'm at the house. He was like, I'm going to pull up. Pulled up on the boat, Solange, where you at? She pulled up on the boat. Like, it was a move. It was sick, though. It was ducks. Why Como? I mean, it's amazing. But I why? don't know. Somebody just said, like, Como's nice, and I looked it up, and it shit looked pretty, and I was like, all right, we flying there. And, and what did you do? Did you, like, rent a villa and just kind of dick it out? Yeah, rented a villa, worked music from there. What did you make out there? There's a couple of credits in the, in the, on the album that's out that I Don't Love You Anymore was yeah. made out there. Yeah. In, like, one take type yeah. shit. I think I'm falling in love. Got worked on out there. Is that where Solange did her vocals as well? Yeah, out yeah, there? yeah. One like little. We had a little microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, some puppet stuff got done out there. A boy's a gun. Solange did her parts. Did, but Frank didn't do anything out there. He didn't jump on. Nah, because we were working sporadically too, yeah. and it was a lot of hanging out. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Work recording at 4 a.m. because we couldn't sleep. That must have been kind of nice in a weird way. Not that you're probably overthinking it because you guys are so, so close, but it must be kind of nice that, that, you, that you defied that expectation of like, oh, we're here in Como, you should get on this track. It's like, nah, let's just hang out and watch an Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, it's never a, it's not work. Yeah, it's, it's like, not. oh, that'd be cool, let's do it. But wait, when I came in the studio toward the end of the making of the record and you were piling, compiling things, you know, you were definitely working. Like, you Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, now it's, yeah. I want this out by this, I want this out by this, mm -hmm. let's fucking do it. And I'm, I'm doing my shit. What do you like when something doesn't stick? Can you let go of an idea if it's Oh not yeah, working? it's songs I didn't make this album. Mm. It's songs that, and I've, I grew, I never had a pet as a child. So I think because me not having to actually take care of something and fee, everything is disposable to me. So it's replaceable. If I mess it, if I fuck a car up, okay, I can you get another one. You don't feel bad about it at all. If, if something breaks or a shirt, all right. It, I liked it, but it's replaceable. As long as my body's fine, it's mm. cool. So mm. even with stuff like that, it's easy to 
reset. I don't really like getting the But not friendships, to... like not relationships or that too. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a very loyal person. Yeah, that's and I, I keep the same people. You see that I keep yeah, the yeah. same people around since I was 16. Like, yeah. it's, I don't really, you know, well, I'm you very know, so loyal. What was interesting was listening to the album for the first time before we knew the people who had come and helped you sort of see it through and complete it. And I, I couldn't really pick anybody that was on the grid. That's what's so great about it. Uh -huh. It's like you presented them a few days later and it's like, oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that person was on that. That person was on that. It was really, it was really cool. Whereas Flower Boy felt super guest heavy, like uh -huh. you put the guests up front. Were you as equally determined on this record to keep the guests really kind of like tucked away and blended in? Uh, honestly, like I think I ruined songs. <laughs> I hate my voice. I think I'm a fucking ridiculously talented producer and have really, really, really good ideas. That's all kinds of messed up though because um, you are widely regarded as having one of the best tones and the best, most recognizable voices in modern music. Yeah, that's cute and shit, but when you want to write singy songs like Stevie Wonder yeah. and you can't because your voice is holding you back and you sound mm. like a monster all the fucking time, <laughs> And because of that, people only want to hear you rap. Yeah. But it's like, I'm not even that good at that, but I'm ridiculously good at that. You start hating it more. Mm. And I know my voice is sick as f but it's like, all right, like I've rapped. Let me, let me show y'all what else I could do. Like I could hit free throws, but I could also like do cool dribbles. Yeah, yeah. So because that of that, sense. I decided on Flower Boy to just try to shut the f up and only speak when I need to speak. Mm. So. That's why Rex is on board of mm. and I don't come in until a, a minute and 20 seconds. Mm. Mm. You know, because I was like, okay, this is, this is how it should be. But that's what I'm, I think I'm good at. Serving the purpose of the producing. best result. Yeah, yeah. Like, and all right, I did my verse. I said it here. When I come in, it's on topic. Concept's good. Make sure the flow's not jumbled. Then and there. And it took me years to figure that out. But you've really kind of been predominantly just producing your own music and, and, and to, for you to sit here now and acknowledge, and I've known you from the, almost the beginning, to acknowledge that you feel like a better producer than you do kind of, at least to your abilities, be able to get to that place you want to as an artist with, with, with the restrictions that you feel you have. Then I guess that in a weird way now, you must be ready to just go out and produce. That's all I want to do. I'm going to spend the next two years maybe probably working on clothes and just producing mm. for others. Mm. You definitely have the musicality and the production chops now to be able to step into almost any environment. I mean, the sounds oh, are equal. That's what I'm saying. I want to go. You want pop? You can, if you, you can make rap, if you can you make want... puppet, you can almost make anything. Yeah, like I that think. is so crazy dense and musical. And even with the drums and the way you did that kind of like Jeff Barrow, David Axelrod, like gang, 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 like that. Yeah, no, I Jeff's great, Portishead's great, all that. But just I don't know. I just have an ear for stuff. Yeah, and whether it's good or not, it's something. It's an idea and I just try to execute the shit. Who would you love to produce? You must have a wish list, dream list. Like, Man, uh, like, it's... Like even beyond, like, like not even a possibility right now, but who would you love just aesthetically and creatively and spiritually to get in a room with just to be able to contribute something to that career or that? Oh that, man, that I don't fucking know, dude. I'm open for anything at this point. Just cause just energy is just so... Mm. I didn't know me and Uzi was gonna record that shit that day, mm. but it came out sick. And now Uzi's on some shit that he's never been on. and. I got to find a pocket that I've never would have went for unless Uzi gave me. So, yeah, just energy stuff like that. But I don't know. Um, big dogs. I'll do Beyonce, obviously Jay. I'm gonna do a jazz album someday. I don't know. It's so much. I'm so fucking. I've always been like Grab that, it and, it all, and it always comes. It always lands. It always fucking lands. I said to you, this is a really sad album. There's some really heartbreaking moments on this album, and you were like, very. And so I wonder kind of... <laughs> very. Damn, that is how I talk. <laughs> very. very. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I sort of wondered, like, um, uh, you know, what, what maybe for you the saddest moment, like what the, what the real core, like the core of the album is for you musically, like what the, what the song is you feel kind of conjures that up the most from your point of view. We talking lyrically? Yeah, whatever the feel. I think, uh, I think Puppet is fucking heavy. That's dark. Like that first verse is like, Jesus Christ, mm. you get a hold of yourself. Well, there's some abandonment issues on this record if you go on the no, lyrics alone. No, definitely. And I think a friend told me like, oh, that first verse for Puppet could also be about someone having drug withdrawals. 100%. It could be like, and when he said that, I was like, oh, that shit is like, 
what do you need? Do you need bread? Do you need to be alone? Mm -hmm. I could I could shut the fuck up and get the way the fuck away from you instead. What is your wish? Mm -hmm. It could be granted. That's because mm -hmm. you rock. You're number one, one on my list. See, mm -hmm. I'm saying that where's Rudolph? You're parasitic. So I do not have self-control. I'm starting to wonder, is this my free will or yours? <laughs> like, that was like, and that's also just being just completely honest. Like yeah. what that's really intense. And that's like, that shows a super, super high level of self-awareness to the point where it's almost detrimental to your own well-being. No, yeah, and it, even b being aware of it and then like still like, that's why that verse is crazy because it's like, I'm uh, clearly aware that I'm, but mm. I'm what can I do? complete, like that. And I think that even being in the middle, kind of in the middle of the album is what bridges everything together. It's a really intense, it's a beautiful and intense, very open listen and, and lyrically there are a the few things that just keep coming back, that sense of like, please just like don't walk out, like, like I get it, I fucked up. Yeah, I think I say don't leave. Like a lot. On the album, it's, it's Earthquake, it's on yeah. the Magic Wand, it's yeah. on uh, Gone Gone in the Verse, yeah. it's uh, like, it's a lot of stuff that just keeps popping up and stuff. And, I think that's why a lot of people are gravitating to it because it is a complete idea. Mm. It's, oh, that red shirt just isn't red. It was also worn over there. And Does it surprise you when you, when, you, when you start taking a look at the body of work and you start to collect the moments that you feel are gonna give it a cohesive feeling and you're like, Shit, that keeps coming up a lot. Does that surprise even you? Yeah, but again, it's just being honest and just putting this. Mm. Like this is the first album where I, uh, I, I didn't want to be cool. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be cool. It's no who that boy is. Yeah. It's no, it's no swat. It's just this, there. there. Yeah. And it may seem repetitive, but that's kind of what life. Everyone wakes up in the Absolutely. morning and brush their goddamn teeth. Absolutely. Some people, but like, I don't care how confident a, a picture you present of yourself or how much you think you have it under control. Everyone is terrified of abandonment. Everyone's terrified of being left alone and. Those experiences you have, whether you're a kid or a grown up, they stay with you. I think those are some of the most present experiences of your life is when people walk out. Yeah, and, it even, and if it's not even that, it's always something. It's, just, it's crazy, things really point back to your childhood. And again, I didn't have a pet, so, okay, it could, this car could blow up, I'll get another one. It's, because I, I don't have to take care of, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's always little shit like that. So, definitely, I don't know what that is, for me, but I'll probably figure it out in like two years. <laughs> yeah, again, it's funny because we've, we've, we've spoken about your music before and I've often, and I think I've come at it from the wrong angle a few times where I've been like, you know, <laughs> like if I had this done this interview two or three albums ago, I'd have been like, who left you, bro? And like, yeah. what happened? <laughs> yeah. And you keep saying to me the same thing, like, I don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's why I'm shit. writing this music to work it out. No, yeah, people don't, it's always little shit like that, that I feel, oh, that's, I think everyone should turn 25. I think everyone's dumb. God willing. Until they're 25. If I didn't start, if I didn't started making music at 24, bro, I would, uh, if I started at Flower Boy and then this, bro, I would be a god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, but you can't discount some of the work you put out. I, it's funny. Cause it's cool. No, we went nuts. But I didn't, that. I would turn 25. I was like, oh, you were, you were being oh on, You were being honest on Wolf. You, oh, you spoke wait a, a minute. You, you spoke about like your upbringing and your family situation on Wolf with great effect. Yeah. It's, it's, and it was spurts there, that. but it was also, if it was 65, 70% cool, it was 30% of damn it, Tyler, just shut the f Like, I didn't realize I should stop yelling on songs till I was 24. <laughs> Seriously. And I was like, why the f didn't y'all tell me to just stop fing yelling all the damn time? Like, it's little sh like that. Yeah. For example, like, I was like, oh, maybe I should stop being funny on the internet and maybe people will realize how talented I am mm. or start taking my music and art more serious. But when you're starting but out, you're you trying to get that attention. But you don't realize it mm. till you're 25. <laughs> I didn't know. How old are you Because I'm also, I'm 28 now. Mm, mm. Yeah, you're looking good with it. <laughs> I'm terrified. I'm fucking terrified, dude. Of <laughs> what? I'm just scared of getting fat and just gross and, because I see it. I see niggas start getting money they eat everywhere, they let they self go. Think about it, what, they wake up at noon. Mm -hmm. First thing they do, they smoke, they mm -hmm. kick it. Mm -hmm. Fuck, we gonna eat? Yeah. They smoke again, they go eat. They not running, they not really doing activities. Luckily, I ride my bike all the time and mm -hmm. we go to Trampoline World and mm -hmm. play tag. We mm -hmm. played tag the other day. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people let themselves go. 
You don't and smoke? Not at all. Never have. I have before. Yeah. I was like, last time I did that, I was 19. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, and it just, it was an unproductive experience. It's just not for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't mm -hmm. knocking it, but it's just and you don't drink? not for me. Never been drunk in my life. Never been drunk in your life? And you eat well, because I just saw what you ate, so you definitely- I eat all right. I eat like a five-year-old still a little <laughs> bit, just cupcakes and fucking shit, but I'm active, so luckily I'm good. But niggas should be gone by- I know niggas 21, I'm like, bro, you were you look 29. I, I you wanna, look 80. I want to talk to you about, um, and this is going to seem like the weirdest thing to focus on, because it really is obviously just a personal enjoyment thing for you. But I really have like become quite obsessed with the fact that you know you are single-handedly promoting the idea of riding a bike. Nigga, <laughs> I... And I just love the fact look, that that's such a, so important to you, because it's obviously way more than just an A to B scenario. It's... Every time I see you in Los Angeles by accident, you're on, on a bike. It's that shit brings me so much joy. I don't I don't know what it is. I love riding my bike, especially during golden hour and having like the perfect songs on and the sun just on me. I'm so happy. And every everyone has something that gives them a ridiculous immense amount of joy. Mm. That sh I just love it. I love when it's five of us and we just go get lost. We're lit we literally put them in the fucking back of the pickup truck and it's like where are we going? I don't know. I tell my bodyguard, I don't know. Let's just go towards Pally's Verdes or fucking Santa Barbara. Oh, this is a cool street. And we get out and we will ride. We rode the most I think we did was 35 miles. That's amazing. Man, I love it. I think more people need to go outside. What was the best ride you ever had? Can you remember the best, the best day you ever had on your bike? It's two. It's two days. So it was tour 2017. The Ooze by King Cruel is out. So that's like the album of the month. And we're in St. Louis, and we're just riding around the city, and we hit, it's fucking cold, mm -hmm. and I, I'm from LA. It's like this 24-7, mm -hmm. so it's probably only 40, but we are dying. <laughs> so we're riding, and um, we see this park, we see, go to this park, and it's no leaves on the trees. They're all on the ground in piles, and we stop, and we're like, what the f And I've never seen no shit like this, because at least where I live in LA, it's not gonna it, be green still. Yeah. And it's just all these different color leaves just on the ground, just in these there. Neat piles. And we just we just get off our bikes and we're looking and we start falling into them and playing in them. It's a video somewhere. Mm. And everyone was like, bro, you've never seen that. But it's like, no, this is brand new to me. And it's crazy, like I was like, what was I, twenty six? And that sh it was still something so brand new to me yeah, like that. Cool. And just that riding around, we went to Chick-fil-A. It was something so simple, nothing crazy, but it's those simple moments that no McLaren, no be like no amount of money could ever. I love that shit. And then 2000 and, uh, 2017, the week Flower Boy came out. It was the one day that I didn't have to go do press or anything. And me, Jasper, and Wyatt, we skated around the island of New York. Just went. We didn't know where we were going. We just really got lost. And it was just fun. It just, I don't know. We didn't have a destination. We knew we could do anything, buy anything, whatever. But it was, the sun was out. And in New York, because of the buildings and stuff, see, out here in L.A., the sun's on everything. Mm. But out there, because of so many buildings and stuff, when the sun comes through, one of the cracks is so potent sharp, and yellow. Shard, yeah. yeah. And we took a break at the Chelsea Market and we sat down. And uh, it was, was Wyatt or Jasper? Wyatt was sitting down on the curb and I took this photo. And it's my favorite photo I ever took because that day was so perfect. The album just came out, it was mm -hmm. doing good. The TV mm -hmm. show, the shoes, mm -hmm. everything was good. And we just skated around, sweated for no fucking reason. And it's one of the best moments ever. And that story just went nowhere. But <laughs> those that's the shit I remember that I'm like, oh, that's... Uh. There's a couple of people who showed up on a record that I want to talk about real quick because I was really pleasantly surprised that you collaborated with them. And one is is Ali, you know, LaRue, who's such yeah. an amazing kind of yeah. like pop star for me and someone who's like made a, you know, had, has made some really deep pop music. And I wonder how that happened just because that popped out like. Just her voice, man. It's something about the tone of that voice that's, it's light, but it, it has depth to it. it mm when it's layered and harmon it's i just thought it was great so i was she like also oh, has a I super didn't... 80s tone too yeah it's that that cut mm. 80s hit the, and that's what i was looking for on um i needed that for thank you 
and I got her on there. And she did some stuff around out of time, but I didn't I didn't end up keeping it, but mm. we're definitely gonna do something in the future. I was gonna sure. say, man, you producing with her would be epic. Like just, that's gotta be on yeah, the earth. That'd be sick. It's, it's so cool, man. You've called I think you've called your publishing, uh, or you definitely you've called some part of your business a boy's a gun. And you know, the song A Boy is a Gun to me is like one of the centerpieces of the record, just because mm-hmm. it kind of sums up all the elements of the record that I love, right? Mm-hmm. It has that kind of like timeless soul, but it also it's like a modern yeah. take on it. You play around with it, you don't just you don't just hang your hook on that. Like, oh, here's yeah. a sample, I'll rap over that. Yeah. It comes in, it comes out. The whole thing is super mm-hmm. playful. And yet the, the song itself is this yearning for like acceptance, you know? And yeah, like, that song's like, fuck you, but no, 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 don't leave. Don't but, leave. But fuck you, but like, yeah. and I just wanted to rap. Just talk, it's more I'm just talking. And it's very, a lot of the songs are very specific things too. It's not just like, it's take your hoodie off. Mm. Why you hide your face from me? Like, I love that line. Lip, I love I that line. Thinking of that, I'm thinking of the moment of that moment. And then I went home and wrote. But it's uh, that one is a moment. Uh, Lionel always said, uh, Lionel, would you say that song sounds like a boy's a gun? Yeah, he says sound like a 1973 argument where I'm just we're following each other in the house and yeah, like yeah 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 and that and I that guess boy that, don't shoot me down when the conversation don't switches shoot yeah 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 when it when it, when it yeah but it's and yeah I love I love that so it's so and I I used to suck at sampling I think I would overthink or be wanting to add other shit but that worked out oh perfect <laughs> it's so perfect when it comes back in with the old soul sample and it's just the whole mm-hmm. thing is such a beautiful because i they, i'll start listening to us i'm listening to the song i was like oh i would do that oh i would put this here oh no i'll let that go for three bars instead of four and i'll start rearranging so then i'll just go home and be like ah let me just cut this it's up super hard as well when you have a sample that's like that dominant like anyone else would just like i said make the track around that sample but you know that sample really is subservient to your arrangement yeah 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 it's all about how you arrange and structure i really start paying attention to structure in like 2016. And who I does re-taught, it well? Like when I retaught myself how to write songs. Like who does it really well? Like who do you think, like if, if we're talking specifically about the kind of people that take liberties with song structure for the better and add value by being unique, like who do you love? Um, I think Drake is really good with song structure. I agree. I think Frank is really good at song structure. I think Frank's really good at song structure. Dude, I mean, I mean, of course, early Neptunes is just to the point with song structure, but keeps it interesting. Mm. Just pop. I I think uh, started from the bottom is one of the greatest pop songs a written of all time, of doubt. <laughs> ever. <laughs> totally, <laughs> really. totally. Uh, it's also one of the illest beats. Like, if we can just talk about beats for a second, you're gonna create a playlist of just the sickest beats. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it's just so incredible that track. It's unbelievable. Um, again starting to pay attention to songs that I've already loved. So what Stevie was doing. Mm. Have you had any experience with Stevie? Like, have you had like a, a meaningful creative experience with uh, him? I met that nigga once. I was with Dave Chappelle. He was like, Stevie, and <laughs> <laughs> <It> looked. <laughs> and Dave was like, this is Tyler. And Steve was like, hi, nice to meet you. I was like, what's up? I like your shit. I be stealing your chords. He was like, thanks. <laughs> And then the nigga looked away, and I was like, "For sure." <laughs> I walked off. Well, at least you can walk away with a. <laughs> at least you walk away with a clear conscience. At least you owned up to it. All right, see you later. It was, it was sick. Going through it now again, I see Kanye on here. Rap verse. On puppet. Tell us a story about that. He's great. I think so. I love Kanye because I love that nigga. I think Ye Ye is in my top three Kanye albums. I heard Violent Crimes and I cried. Uh, it's crazy how honest he was on that album and made it sound cool. He's been honest for a long talk his fr- but it's time. it's a different it's a different honesty on that fucking Yay album. Yeah, it, it, his a hundred grand to turn your best friend to an op. It that's dark. Yeah, totally. That sh- I love that fucking album. He doesn't hold except back. when the drums come in on that first on the intro. Mm. Yeah, but I love that album. You know my favorite rock. Versus ever is from sorry, good music is Pusha T when he goes, um, the president of good music has been announced, and you mm-hmm. go, ah, oh, congratulations, and he goes, quarter of a million, and that check don't bounce. You think that well, check that's, don't bounce? That's a light salary. They're not paying you a lot to be the president. <laughs> 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 I was like, I appreciate the honesty, but you might want to go and seek a raise, bro. Pusha T is my favorite rapper. That nigga hit me when the album came out and said I killed it, and I replied back, you don't know how much this means to me. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that nigga. 
Yeah, man, because he's... Cool. I really do. Yeah, quality and consistency comes out of his music is always amazing. I love him. Uh, you were working up at Conway, and obviously, obviously Pharrell's on the record too, but I mean, that's a deep relationship that you guys have forged. And I feel like he, if there was anyone that was going to be somebody that you would look to as a peer, but also someone who's kind of inspired you musically and the way that he approached chords and all the things that matter to you, oh, it's no, kind of... I love that man. That man's my damn father. <laughs> that's where it's at. I love him. And it's deeper than just being a fan of his music. I mean, just on a behind the scenes level, he's opened the doors for me in so many ways. I am forever in debt to that man. Mm. Like, for real. For real. Can you think of one really cool bit of advice or one thing he said to you that really stuck? Because I know you collect that stuff. He I just said it's too. a difference between getting old and getting older. Getting older is just wiser and yeah. being more aware and things. But some things get old. Some people just try to... Rakim is still out here and do rags and... <laughs> Pelly Pelly jackets being stuck at a time and getting old and you know he just told me to just never get old stay getting older so I gotta ask the question because I've danced around it a little bit and, and then we're gonna finish up but I, I wanted to ask this question and I, and I don't I want to say this with the most respect because I think where you're at in your career right now is just you're, you're, you're on the best wave ever and the fact you had number one with this album, the most adventurous, honest record you've ever made, like seriously respect with that. Thank man. You. Like it's so deserved. I, but I, I can't. I'll until Billie Eilish fuck me up next week. Yeah, but that's okay. Cause that bitch is big. She, she absolutely. That came from nowhere. <laughs> She's totally deserved of his fight right now. That album is mind blowing. Do you love that album, by the way? I think it's sick. I like her. I think she's. I just want her to just keep doing her damn thing. Yeah, she will though. That's the cool thing about it. Yeah. Like if she's having this kind of success right now and this kind of and not compromising. I want to work with her. Oh, pff, that would be. I don't know what the f we would make. Even if it don't come out, if it's trash, I still just want to see what we could. No, you guys would make incredible work. That, that can happen. I'm sure that can happen. Definitely. Um, I wanted to ask you this. So I know you don't look back, but I've noticed in the last decade that there is one crew or one thing that has had the most impact on in young independent creative spirits and that is Odd Future. Uh -huh. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. When you guys came out and you established your own independent lane uh -huh. and you were just uncompromising and then you were like open about who you were and what you liked and what you didn't like and you weren't scared and you've grown up in public and so much greatness has come out of that. And I, and I wonder whether there's ever an opportunity for, for that to be reflected and documented the right way. I didn't even, and I still don't think I know the impact that we may have had on oh. a generation. I, it's huge. I was with Lionel two weeks ago, and I was like, yeah, look at how these kids are dressed. And I was like, but like all the kids are dressed like this. Now, and not all the kids, I mean, just the ones Enough. who I was talking yeah, about yeah. Yeah. specifically. I was like, man, like, I remember being 17 and that I was the fucking outlier. I couldn't, everyone was like, what the fuck you were? And I thought it was so sick that they all have each other. Like, oh, look at this. Look at these overalls or this tee I got or these like, yeah. I thought that was cool. And someone was like, hey, you know that's cause of you. <laughs> and I was like, huh, I mean, maybe, but I don't know how important Odd Future was. And it's cause I just lived in it. We was just doing our thing. We was just being us. And Isn't it up to somebody to convince you of that? Because it would be kind of like you say, a strange observation, a strange realization, like we're really important. And by the time you do that, you have very little lane to travel anymore. Yeah. So you only look back and you yeah. only live in your past successes. You've got so much more to do. But That's I just so much. And, I, and I'm aware of the influence we've had on certain sh but I don't think I'll know how much deeper it goes aside from some people starting to wear certain shirts or people's album artwork like I, other than that way I don't more know than that. it's way more than that it's the bravery to be able to come out and speak openly about you know how you feel uh, you know anxiety depression sexual preference um you know who you are as an individual how you feel about about you know the country you live in all the stuff that you guys did without making a fucking scene out of it like you never came out and made a statement you were just like this is how i feel like like, like it'll lump it yeah i yeah i mean that's just how i am you know me yeah. it's just yeah that i I wish more people was like that. A lot of people are taking that now, though, and making it fucking, like, not cool. Everyone's getting canceled. Everyone, I have anxiety. I can't come over. I can't close the door to my refrigerator because I... People are making such a scene out of this shit now, and it's, uh, it's annoying. And 
I I hope that that opened the door for a lot more people it to did. just be honest with themselves and not try to fit in or whatever. If you don't like something, if you like something, just fucking do it. I would and just, just like go one on moment it. that lasted like an hour or an hour and a half that correctly told that story endorsed by all of the stakeholders, directed <laughs> by someone sick, with you being interviewed before you're 60. I love those guys. Yeah. I talked to Damo earlier today, actually. It's crazy, like, some kids, man, and then, you know, from Sid and Earl and Frank, like, every, it's And everyone's it's still so good, cool. right? Like, everyone's kind of yeah, still it's, good. It's crazy. Like, it's rare that it lands that way and that you're able to look back on that experience. Yeah, Left Brain hit me the other day just with a congrats, and it's like, and it's sick. Like, man, I hit, Te I hit Tebe up the other day, and I was like, he made this comment, and he said, people don't realize we got famous off our first ideas, <laughs> our rough drafts. This was 19. Like, I've been, I finished editing Yonkers when I was 18 years old. That's so fucking crazy. Or was I 19? That is so but crazy. But, like, like it, people don't realize, like, we got famous off our first dumbass ideas mm. before perfecting shit. And I, I say that, like, it's beautiful that, for me at least, it's been just this, up, like, album six. Oh, I just got my number one. I just, when See You Again played on the radio two years ago, which it wasn't a bunch, it literally, it was the LA radio station, they was looking out, just incredible, and those guys are really cool. Mm. And they looked out and played it a couple times, but that meant so much because like, this shit's brand new to me. Like, yeah. niggas come out the gate, number one album, pop and song, private jets, grand, like, mm. it's been a steady slope for me. People have bought in because of all the creati creativity you've shared with us from, and it's everything, and I use you as an example, and I hope you don't mind, when I'm talking to young artists and they're like, how do we kind of cut through and all of the noise? And I say, you have to look at it as not a job. You have to look at creativity as a life. And you have to wake up and want to create all the time. And I use you as the prime example of someone who has real estate on Fairfax and real estate on the internet and real estate in the app store and real estate in the music game and real estate in videos and real estate in, like, it's yeah. just like you have and all of these intent. things. A lot of, the, a lot of these guys in 10 is money. These favorite rappers, all right, they come up, they fire. And what were they working for? Because they want the the money, the cars, and when they get that, it's nothing driving them. Mm. What drives me is getting an idea executed. Mm. And every time I have an idea, it shoots for that. It's not about having the, f I don't give a f about Spotify playlist. I don't give a f about Apple playlist. <laughs> I don't give a f about none of that shit. But when something I work hard on is on there mm. and I'm next to the biggest song in the world, it's like, oh wow, this idea made it to that. Oh sh well yeah, hey everyone, look, I. This is what yeah. sitting in my room for hours, 7 a.m. every morning on album six, like, oh, I haven't, I'm not shit yet. Let me perfect this idea yeah. and this melody and this progression and let me sit on Photoshop for hours and do this. No, the coloring in its video is not right. You didn't even say hello to me for 10 minutes when I came in the studio and I wasn't even offended because you were so deep in, in, your, in yeah, your Photoshop. It's, it's not You were no so overnight. deep in that experience. It's two years, I, I fucking spend so much time on this shit. Yeah. And whether or not people like it, whatever the f I just want the idea executed. And when that happens and it goes number one, bro, that shit means a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This album isn't just fucking. I didn't think people would like this album based on everyone hating Cherry Bomb so fucking much. And <laughs> people don't hate it that no, much. No, 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 no. Everyone hated it. It was a small sector of people that liked it. And because I put the instrumentals out, people were coming across to it and starting to appreciate it. When that shit came out, everyone fucking hated it, bro. Everyone fucking hated it. Everyone didn't understand it. This is fake nerd shit. Mm. Actually, no, because your fucking music taste is so fucking surface level, mm. you wouldn't even know where this is actually from because that's the only fucking gauge of anything that's black and weird that you could get this from, but that's actually from this. Mm. And I'm not saying the album's good or bad. I'm just saying people fucking hated that fucking album. So yeah, when yeah, I put yeah. this out and it, it beat first week, and again, I don't make shit to beat first week or beat radio or whatever, but for this work of art and that album cover and these videos and me doing this suit wig thing, beat, and this is no disrespect to Khaled or anyone, but this nigga had every person in the industry, everyone on that fucking album, everyone, everyone, Cardi B, 21 Savage, Travis Scott, Post Malone, Beyonce J, everyone who sells billions of records and the fact that I beat him with this, 
that isn't parallel to all the popping music right now was fucking crazy, bro. It, are you serious? <laughs> like that was insane to me. And it's new to me, bro. I'm yeah. on album five and six. Yeah. I'm stoked for you. And it's, wor it's work. It's effort. It's work. This is fucking, whether it's like it or not, bro, it's so much work and detail put into this shit. <laughs> like. Before you go, I got to ask you. I have to ask you, man. As I'm a, as so a, proud a, of as myself. Ex, dude, it, you should be, man. I'm hyped. P FaceTime me. Blah, blah, blah. I told him, blah, 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 blah. I was happy. Yay. I talked to you. Like, uh, I'm talking to these people that I love who are proud of me. And I'm, I hung up and I'm like, all right, sick. This week's cool, but that don't mean shit. That little number one is baby scale shit in the grand scale. Like, all right, back to work, mm -hmm. back to this movie shit. Make sure this shit's good. Make sure, like, that number one is baby shit, bro. I'm fucking so grateful and happy, but don't get it fucked up. That shit is baby shit. Cause well, I still gotta, I think I have the, one of the best festivals. <laughs> like I got top three festivals right now. It's Coachella, then it's me, and then I don't know who the fuck ever is Max. next. But I have to make sure Facts. I keep pushing that to get to number one at some point. What's the movie? Oh, I just, I'm gonna make movies at some point. You got a script already ready to go? Uh, I'm, Good ideas? Maybe, who knows? I and don't know. I, I have to ask you before you go, now you can tour and you can tour the world. Yeah. Like not 95% of the world, but like mm -hmm. the world. I can go back to the UK, <laughs> back dude. To the UK, which is so crazy. And we were gonna have a conversation when that first happened. We were somehow dancing around the idea of having a conversation. It just didn't land and it wasn't the right time. And then you've just been back to the UK, chaos ensued, healthy chaos, excitement. But now you've got three, like you've got official shows. Mm -hmm. Can you even imagine what it's gonna be like stepping on the stage? And it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. And I'm, I'm so hyped, man. I'm happy to go back. I'm, I'm hyped, man, and I'm happy. It, it's gonna be great. It's work to do, though. It's fucking work to do. Yeah, a there lot. Is.